Hey guys, in this video, uh, this is video three in the Breaking Down the Secrets of My Rod series. Um, and again, I keep getting this comment a lot in my, uh, I guess in my in my comments, and I get it. Uh, most people are like, I'm not buying the rods that you have, they're too expensive. Look, I get it. Um, I am affiliated with Shimano and G Loomis, so you have to take that for into consideration. I understand that the rods that I have are really, really expensive, and I'm not pushing these rods on you at any point. I'm just telling you what I have and what I would recommend you buying should you have the money. It has nothing to do with, um, you know, having a ton of money. Guys, I'm a high school teacher. Like, I don't make a ton of money. So I'm very fortunate to have the rods that I do. So with that being said, we're going to talk about two rods today that are imperative in my arsenal right now, and that is a spinnerbait rod and a chatterbait rod. I think they kind of go hand in hand. They basically have the same action as far as the bait goes to an extent. Like they're not the exact same, obviously. But first and foremost, let's get this thing started off with one of my absolute favorite rods that I own. Uh, this is a pretty versatile rod and reel uh, for everything, but there's a lot of things you have to take into consideration when it comes to a spinnerbait rod. And a spinnerbait rod has a very, very uh, big role in my boat. I throw a spinnerbait a ton. You see that I have this thing rigged up with a uh, half ounce, uh, pretty good size willow leaf blade here from the tackle box. This thing has been beat all too heck. You can see that fish have just been chewing on this thing. But this is a Shimano Poison Adrena 173 medium heavy. And this thing is an absolute game changer when it comes to throwing a spinnerbait. Matter of fact, Shimano just released a video the other day on their Facebook page and they have this exact same setup uh, recommended for their spinnerbait technique. So that's really pretty cool. I have this with a coarse solid titanium, 7.1 to 1 gear ratio. It has the SVS Infinity braking system. Again, this is um, a versatile 172, or I'm sorry, 173 medium heavy. Um, obviously, CI4, you have uh, what this carbon infused, the CI4 grip, looking at the carbon handle for the Poison Adrenaline that we're normally. Uh, used to have and this thing right here um, I don't believe there's a better spinnerbait rod on the planet um, and again take that for what it's worth it's a really expensive spinnerbait rod we've talked about in this series before that I believe that sensitivity only gets you so far especially when you're talking about moving baits like this so I, I don't normally spend the money on uh, really high-end rods like this for moving baits however this 7.3 medium heavy, heavy action poison adrena is the absolute berries for this and I'm telling you what if you've ever casted a core solid titanium from Shimano, you're probably not ever going to want to throw another rod or reel. I'm telling her another reel. This thing right here is phenomenal. Again, SVS Infinity braking system on the side there. Paired up, I have this full with 12 pound Sunline FC Sniper. Again, one of the major downfalls with these rods is the warranty, um, but take care of your stuff, they'll last you forever. These little things here that are on the, the real seat right here, people claim that these things are hook keepers. Uh, I don't know that to be true or not. Maybe it is. I have these uh, Fuji style hook keepers up here. That's one of my only downfalls or my only kind of gripes about the Poison Adrena series is they don't have hook keepers. Um, but, you know, it kind of is what it is. We're, we're looking at the Shimano uh, Zodius the same way, but they did put a hook keeper on those. So maybe eventually we'll see these and uh, if you're really, really interested in spending a ton of money, money on a rod, the Poison Ultima just come out in the United States. They're like $899. Bucks. Uh, they're not for me. But Poison Adrena 173 medium heavy is going to be my spinnerbait rod. has a lot of backbone, but has that tip is perfect. That 7.3 allows you to get that thing out there and really whip that uh, spinnerbait. That coarse solid titanium is an amazing reel. If I was going to change that for anything, I would definitely put a Corrado DC on there. That would give me the ability to cast those big blades uh, farther in the wind without getting backlashes. The coarse solid titanium, super smooth. Smoothest reel I've owned probably ever from Shimano, and I'll definitely own some more of them. Uh, so let's step it up to the, um, the chatterbait. You see here that I have this thing paired up with a um, Picasso shock blade. This is kind of one of those rods that are that's designed for a specific technique in my boat, whereas a lot of the other rods I have, I will be throwing a lot of different baits on it, whereas this one right here is going to have a strict uh, bladed chatter, or chatter bait or bladed jig on here. This is an 883C 
bladed jig rod, BJR. Again, a lot of the stuff when it comes to Loomis, there are series is like the IMX Pro that offer like technique specific. Whereas like if you look at the NRX Plus, you're not going to get a lot of technique specific. They do have some now out, um, you know, like a bladed jig rod and stuff. But again, I don't spend the money on the NRX because I feel like you're getting the same warranty on this warranty as this. And the, the sensitivity is not going to be a giant factor compared to something that's bottom contact. So they do make a smaller version of this bladed jig rod. I had it as well, but I'm not a huge fan of it for the bladed jigs I'm throwing. I'm normally throwing a half ounce uh, or even bigger, maybe even a three quarter ounce bladed jig. But again, this is a half ounce um, Picasso shock blade. Really like it a lot. Something I just started throwing has a Kitek uh, swim bait for the trailer. This thing, again, 883, so 88 inches. You're looking at seven foot four. This thing uh, is rated for three eighths to three quarter ounce, uh, and it is a fast action. It allows that rod tip to load up on a hook set. The reason I like this 883 as opposed to the other Loomis IMX Pro bladed jig rod they have is I fish a bladed jig around grass more often than not. If I'm fishing a bladed jig, there's probably grass around. And I didn't feel like that the other bladed jig rod had the ability to rip that uh, bait out of that grass as well. So that's why I went with the 883. Bladed Jig Rod IMX Pro G Loomis. I have this with a Corrado DC in the 7.4 to 1 gear ratio. Uh, it allows me to cast this thing an absolute mile, especially in the wind and stuff. I'm usually throwing this in the wind with grass and things, so it allows me to whip that thing out there and not get it backlash. Um, so those are two of my rods that I have on my deck right now or in my boat for those. Spinner bait is going to be a 173 medium heavy poison adrena from Shimano paired up with a core solid metanium. In the 7.1 to 1 gear ratio, 12 pound Sunline FC Sniper. Uh, normally throwing a uh, tackle box spinner bait or something um, from Picasso on there. Uh, the bladed jig rod is a G Loomis IMX Pro 883C, so it's a casting uh, bladed jig rod, BJR. I like that. It's the the bigger one of the two, I think the other one might be an 862 or something. Don't quote me on that, but. I didn't like it as well. I had them both. I uh, ended up selling the that one and ended up buying this 883. I like it a lot. So there's two rods I have in my deck and with a spinner bait and or bladed jig rod, those are two that I would recommend. So hope this series is helping you guys out. I'm enjoying it. I have several more rods to show you guys over the next few uh, series uh, and we'll get into them. So the next video that you guys are going to see is about the one and only jerkbait rod that I own.